Hello, everybody, and you are very welcome to Successful Perspectives. Successful Perspectives, of course, is when we deep dive into the topic of leadership with one of our, in my view, one of my favorite members of our very selective network boardroom by Amir. For this conversation, I'm delighted to be joined by Alnez Popat, who is the CEO of Life Care International. Alnez, wonderful to see you, and thank you for being on Successful Perspectives. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you very much. I have been looking forward to this conversation because, I don't know, I wonder would you be able to guess why? Because when our network now, we must have well over 400 members, right? CEOs, senior government officials, very influential decision makers. And most of them are, let's say, kind of certainly 70% of them are from big multinational companies. And I think what's most interesting about your success is you're, uh, you're more of a self-made man in that sense. Maybe you could tell me a little bit about your, your background and how you grew the business out, because I'm always inspired by these stories. Oh, great. Um, so basically, I started this business uh, 20, just under three decades ago, 30 years ago. Uh, I started the business uh, because um, my father actually fell ill he was my first client um, and my first claim. And uh, that's when I actually saw the power of credible health insurance. And ever since we were able to, uh, uh, to add value to him and to support him and to basically um, uh, help um, a family member out in that situation, I've just become really passionate about the business. And uh, I've, just been, I've just set myself out for the last three decades to um, make sure everybody has good credible health insurance. And that's, that's what drives me. And you clearly, you clearly love what you're doing. So let, let's jump in into this topic of, of leadership. I'm keen to kind of get under the, the hood a little bit deeper on yep. your, your leadership philosophy. So how would you say, what are the main central tenets if you were to describe your leadership philosophy? What would that look like? So, uh, Trevor, I think for me, what's really important, um, you know, uh, for me to be a leader, you know, you need to ensure that your, your team are really aligned with your purpose. Um, they need to be really clearly uh, aligned with the outcomes that you seek. And once you've got the right team with the right purpose and uh, with the right outcomes, then I think uh, it's important that leaders or in my opinion myself i would inspire and energize them uh, it's really important to understand what energizes your team and then uh, it's absolutely critical that you need to be the dumbest person in the room and in the ue that's quite easy because there's so many smart people around here uh, and then you need to listen to your team and you need to listen to them and their ideas and just get them to fuel ideas on the direction of your company I love it. Let's dig a little bit deeper onto that that energizing point. How do you how do you do that, or or how do you inspire that? You know, everybody has a deeper purpose. Everybody, and I think it's really important to try and drill down that why they're doing what they're doing. And when you kind of when you kind of identify that, it can be really powerful. Uh, it's a really powerful motivator. Um, and I think it's just constantly reminding them about them doing what they're doing. Um, and, and I think that's, that's how we basically drive into that. Do you spend much time thinking about your leadership philosophy or maybe how it's changed and evolved over the last 30 years? Do you take time to think about it? Even sitting down for this conversation, was it, a, was it an interesting exercise to think about yourself as a leader and also the ability to think about your own thoughts about how you think about leadership. Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting one, uh, Trevor. You know, when I first started the business, it was all about my passion. It was all about my purpose. And I wanted to surround my, my, myself with people who could actually um, help me carry that out. And as time goes on, you kind of think now, you know, you need people around you to carry this forward. You need to create a legacy. 
and you need to create a legacy of people who can carry that because as as one man um you know you, you're only mortal and uh, you need to make sure that this purpose is something that lasts forever lasts beyond you and that's what you try and create within your team and that's really really important in driving the company forward yeah it, it's a fascinating point because um Amis, I'm not sure if you know Amis who runs Nexa here, an integrated marketing agency. But he, 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 he built it up over the years and very successful in offices in London and New York. And again, a kind of more self-made man in the, in the network. And he said to me in one of these conversations, um, once he started thinking about creating a business that would outlive him, that's what kind of changed a lot for him. And he, those words, when he said though, that to me, I had never thought of my business that way. And it really had an impact where I started to think, yeah, wouldn't it be cool to build something that you're handing over, that, you're, it's, there's a, you're, that it outlives you? And, and that also is a very powerful and useful idea in terms of how you approach things then. You yeah, know, because, because at the end of the day, uh, sorry to just uh, let you in, is, you know, uh, successful leaders need to die empty. You, you can't die with, every, with all the knowledge that you've acquired over the years within you. You've got, to, you've got to really have all of that transferred somewhere else for somebody else to carry on. I love it. So, so how do you measure success nowadays, right? After being tremendously successful over, over 30 years, how do you measure it now? I think now it's about the impact that you have uh, to your stakeholders. It's about what problem, are you solving a problem in the world today? Uh, are you sustainable in doing it? And uh, do you really make a difference to people's lives? And I really think we do uh, because we're all in the health and well-being business, in the healthcare and well-being business. And uh, we, 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 we see that happening all the time whereby we really do make a difference when people do get onto that operating table and we've been helping them, uh, making sure that it's all paid for and we help them not only uh, before they fall sick, but after they've fallen sick, you know, we help them recover from it. And we really feel that we're driving that purpose, uh, you know, to our core. Yeah, one of our teammates messaged me, uh, uh, well, a few weeks ago now. Now, thankfully, it wasn't anything too serious, but she had to go to the hospital and she sent a message saying, you know, She's American, so she thanked, sent a message saying, you know, thanks for investing in really good health care, you know, with the insurance side of things. And it's not until those situations, unfortunately, and inevitably at some point in life crop up that this is where it really counts, right? On the health care side of things, it's, it's so important. And it's a responsibility for all of us. Um, no question, yeah. So I would imagine, right, you, you started this business – Three decades ago, obviously as a young boy, you know, it was 30 years ago, you must have been a young boy, but um, you started it, your, your first claim, so to speak, was to, for your father and to help your father. You would strike me just from our interactions as somebody that, you know, we have these ideas of a natural leader. 30 years ago, would you have taught yourself as a, as a natural leader or is it something you had to grow into or... What's your journey been like on that? Uh, I've, uh, I think I've always, I'm told that I've always been a natural leader. I'd like to think of myself as always having been a natural leader. Um, I, uh, you know, from very early age and right after university, because I started business for myself. Trevor, I, I have never been paid a salary. Nobody's ever paid me a salary. Um, and uh, I've had to, I've had to find ways to basically make sure that the people I recruit stick around with me, and that just develops a leadership capability in you. Because, uh, as I said before, finding what people, what drives people, and aligning them to your purpose, aligning them to your passion, uh, is really important, really, really powerful. And uh, somehow that just that I feel brings out leadership capability in everybody when they when, when you all have a common purpose and you're all solving a common problem. You, you said that maybe, or, or as you put it, you know, other people would probably say that you're, you have that inclination towards natural leadership. 
But was there a time when you were younger where you started to notice this about yourself? You, you strike me as somebody on that who's very comfortable in their own skin, which is a very nice demeanor, a nice way to kind of approach life. Do you think that's a fair comment? And and do you think that kind of feeds into your leadership style? Yeah, definitely. Growing up, if there was ever anybody leading anybody into trouble, it was me. It was, <laughs> if it was anybody leading the team into doing anything, it was definitely me. Fortunately, I managed to find something good to do with it uh, rather than something destructive. I know I, you're talking to your brother there. I know exactly what you mean. And I think that, I think, you know, I was very mischievous when I was young. Mischievous is an understatement. And um, it's funny. It, it, I think this shows you a lot about, you know, just applying your energy in the right area you know having a mischievous mindset i think is actually it shows a lot of creativity <laughs> some of the stuff i used to get up to when i was younger and all of a sudden you just if you're lucky you get to a certain age and you just start to apply that energy in the right way my wife helped me to do that as well you know just like there's something about when you meet the right person and you just and i, I think Applying that energy in the right way can have this transformational effect on your whole, on your whole Absolutely. life. Absolutely, mm. it's it's, but, it's 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 finding even today when I see little kids that are spirited, I seem to equate uh, a spirit and confidence with leadership. And I think you're absolutely right. I I see where you're going with this. That when as you do get older, that is that mischievousness, that spirit is usually funneled into something really good and can be something great. Yeah. And I like that word, the spirit of it. Maybe that's a nicer way of putting it. Look, you touched on that. You touched on this a minute ago in terms of, you know, the legacy of your business and trying to focus now on making sure and from a sustainability point of view. But again, thinking back 30 years ago, as you started the business and relative to today, how do you feel the goalposts have moved on, on what leadership is actually defined as? You know, the modern leader has a responsibility, obviously, for the bottom line, for the business to make money in order for it to exist, but also, as you say, create a culture that helps the team to, to thrive and align, you know, their purpose with the company purpose and also have a positive impact on, on society. What, what's your take on how that is shifted over the last 30 years for you personally, but also more broadly when you look out into the market? So I think uh, does the modern leader have a responsibility to make a positive impact on society? 100%. There's no question about that. Absolutely. Uh, we make a living uh, with what we earn. We make a life with what we give. Uh, and every leader knows that the more you give, the more you're going to get back. Uh, but as you know, as we've mentioned, that we're in the health insurance business, um, we're in the well-being industry, uh, and since we founded Life Care back in Kenya, uh, we are quite passionate about uh, helping the underserved communities. So we identified an underserved community, which is the uh, Maasai community around the Maasai Mara. Seven years ago, we embarked on a mission to provide a free healthcare uh, on an annual basis. So every year we kind of run a uh, free medical camp for all the Maasai in the region. We run it for two days. We take a team of doctors, specialists, surgeons, nurses, pharmacists, volunteers. Um, the last count we did last year was we took down 110 uh, volunteers and doctors. We have treated close to 8,500 Maasai to date. Um, we do numerous, we do tumor removals. We actually uh, create a field hospital in a, in, in, in a, in a dilapidated uh, school room. Um, we do tumor removals, we do cataract surgeries. We do several hundred dental extractions. We've even delivered babies uh, at the camp. We do cleft lip palate surgeries. And uh, what we've now done is we've actually brought our partners in to participate with us. So companies like Bupa, Cigna, Allianz, and AXA, um, you know, they're, they're, they're competitors uh, on the global scale, but 
as I tell them that you know, in the spiritual service, uh, there is there is no competition. There's only partnerships. So we bring them together with us, and we all go together, and we basically conduct this medical camp. I, I, lo- I love it. I, I love it, Al Nazar, and I can see how passionate about about it you are. Can I ask you a personal question? So I had the privilege of spending a little bit of time um, with the Maasai people, just very short, but incredible, incredible, incredible people, culture and how they live. It's fascinating. Is that more satisfying than the money you've made over the last 30 years? Oh, my God. There's no question about it. There is absolutely no question. When you've actually helped somebody, and I, I can't even begin to tell you about some of the doctor's stories that we've had there on how you've really helped these people and how you've saved lives. Um, mm. yeah, it's, grat- it's very gratifying. There's yeah. no question about it. Very, very gratifying. But... Um, we all know that you have to make money to be able to do stuff like this. Yeah. You know, you have to be sustainable. Exactly. It's a, it's a balance and act of both. But um, okay. And maybe this feeds into it a little bit before we shift over and have a little bit of fun with our rapid fire round. Yeah. Last question. What's the best piece of career advice you've ever received or just over the last 30 years come to the conclusion yourself that you would share with somebody who was perhaps starting out on an entrepreneurial journey or just starting out on the career ladder? What's that piece of advice? So I've got two things that I really would like to say that's really been guiding me uh, throughout my uh, throughout my life and throughout my career. Something that I basically learned from my late father. Um, the first thing is when purpose, passion, and your job are aligned, you never work a day in your life. So for me, that is the ultimate fuel for me on a daily basis. And the the second thing that I've also learned from my late father is you and money will have a very unique relationship. Only one can be the master. The other one will be the slave. What is it going to be? Okay, you that was, it, it honestly left me thinking. It's such a powerful idea, right? Um, and you can do so much with money, but as we've kind of alluded to, the most gratifying is when you're doing it for somebody else, right? Happiness is found in helping other people. This is the thing. This is the, we, we spend so many years building and facing, and then we realize the thing that's most satisfying is when you're able to help somebody else who is perhaps not in a, as fortunate position. Okay, Alnez, I love that philosophical point. Alnez, thank you so much for being on Successful Perspectives. Absolute pleasure and really appreciate it. Trevor, thank you very much. Thank you and good luck.